whether you're new to sewing or a seasoned stitcher, creating a scarf with your serger expands your wardrobe while giving you a great sense of accomplishment. I'd like to share with you two of my favorite scarf styles made with a serger. Each can be created in about 30 minutes. Let me show you how. The first of the two serger scarves that I'm going to create for you in 30 minutes or less is the first, the spiral scarf. That's obviously the scarf I'm wearing. It's cut out of 12 inch widths of fabric, folded and surged so that it spirals like a barber pole. The seam spirals like a barber pole. It's very unique and becomes on the bias so it drapes around your neck very beautifully. The second scarf I'm going to show you is a cascading scarf made out of a chiffon or another lightweight fabric with a rolled edge and the cascading part comes by the elastic that's been zigzagged down the center and can be worn around the neck, worn like a shawl, fast to make, attractive, and you can make it practically out of any fabric that's drapeable. The fabrics that I have chosen for this range from chiffons and shears, rayon batik, and this is just a polyester blouse weight fabric. Anything that you would consider by touch to be suitable by a scarf would be great for these serger scarf techniques. Now both of these scarf techniques plus others are featured in a book that I did with Donna Fenske on Sewing with Nancy called Sensational Scarves. During the television show we did not show surging techniques so I'm going to show you the surging te techniques that makes these scarves even more sensational but all the dimensions and sizes are given in this book for your easy ease of reference. Now I'm going to give you both cutting instructions now for the scarves. First of all, I'm going to share with you the spiral scarf. Now the spiral scarf is 12 inches wide. The fabric starts out that wide. So you're going to cut two lengths that are 12 inches wide and then sew them together, sew the short ends together. Then measure carefully so that the length is 72 inches. Now you could change the length or change the width, but just make certain that the length is divisible by the width. And if you're wondering why, well it's because of the folding technique and serging technique that I'll be showing you. Notice the point end of the scarf will be folding it at a 45 degree angle, surging, and when you surge in this manner, the seam creates a barber pole effect until you get to the other edge and there you see it again coming and presto it comes out exactly because 72 and 12 work together very well divisible by each other. The width shrinks, the length slightly shrinks and let me show you how it starts out. Here's the original fabric and here's the serge fabric. It gets a little bit narrower, a little bit shorter but it works out extremely well. So those are the cutting instructions for the spiral scarf. The cutting instructions for the cascading scarf are a little bit simpler. You just cut two widths 18 inches wide. So I have two fabrics, two widths of 18 inches of the very lightweight. Here's the second and you'd sew the seam together so you have one long piece of fabric. This one is going to be 18 inches by 90 inches. This fabric was 45 inches wide. So we have the cutting of both of the fabrics. And now the first technique I'm going to show you at the serger will be to create the spiral scarf. We'll go back to that fabric and I'll show you that the folding technique is first. At the table I just finished getting the fabric the correct length. I can't stress this enough. The width must be divisible by the length and you'll see why in just a few minutes. The 12 by 72 inch length of fabric is folded upper right hand corner folded in half so we have a 45 degree angle but that's where I'm going to start to surge right at this point. Well speaking of surging we better talk about the setup at your serger. I'm working with a three thread overlock, a narrow overlock. So I have the right needle, upper looper and lower looper and I have rayon thread, Madeira's rayon thread. That's what I chose to match my batik fabric. At the needle area, you'll just see one needle instead of two, which is traditional for an overlock stitch, and it's that right needle, as I mentioned. And I've started to serge on a scrap of fabric. I need a little anchor cloth, a little tail to work with, because when I mentioned we're going to be starting to serge right at this point, you lift up the presser foot, place the fabric next to the blade, and then sew a few stitches, and you 
it does help to just kind of pull until that f fabric has surged oh, three or four stitches and I think that anchor cloth does a great job. So this is just a, st a surge or stitch and I'm going to surge until I reach the fold area where that angle of the top layer now is, I have a horizontal and a vertical edge. We're going to meet these together. And to help meet them together, I use a pin marking. And the pin is, I'm going to place that to the left of the needle, just approximately a fourth of an inch from the edge, or a presser foot width. I'm not going to put the pin all the way through. I don't want to surge through the pin. I just want to stop surging at that fourth of an inch. Because the needle is, is offset in, in the back, that pin helps me to stop right before the edge. Now the needle is in the fabric, that's a must. Raise the presser foot. Align the horizontal edge with the vertical edge. Reach underneath and adjust the lower fabric so that there isn't a tuck on it. And you can see these two edges are aligned. Then lower the foot and then do the rest of the surging. And when you're surging, you're simply going to meet the edges together. And you'll be doing this matching of the cut edges for about 90% of the scarf until you get to the very bottom edge. So just let me surge these two, these two edges together. And notice how the fabric is twisting like the spiral. It's kind of twisting and turning in here because it's forming, as you saw earlier, the diagonal seam that coils around the scarf, allowing it to be on the bias even though you didn't cut the fabric on the bias. So I'm just going to search. I'm reaching near the end of the scarf and now you'll notice that the horizontal edge is on the underneath layer instead of on the top layer. So as I approach that area I'm going to use that pin marking again and place a pin approximately a fourth of an inch before the fabric ends on the underneath side. And so I'll just surge till I'm across from that pin. Make sure the needle is down. So the same process happens. Raise the foot, meet the two edges together, the horizontal edge and the vertical edge. And it takes a little time at both times to align them. The beautiful thing about this is that as you had the width divisible by the length, when you do this, then the fabrics will meet at the opposite end. The fabrics will exactly meet. Now they may be off by a fourth of an inch, but that's okay. Just surge off that extra fabric if you have a little bit of it and keep surging. And I'm just going to get this to fold. And search. And here's the point at the opposite end. And I had the turn of the fabric, you can see at this point, and it just spirals around, the seam spirals around like an old fashioned barber pole. So that as the fabric drapes around your neckline, it's on the bias, it's on the diagonal. There's one more step, and that is to add a drop of seam sealant to the tip of the scarf. P place a drop of this in the area, and then let it dry. If you wanted to expedite the drying process, just hit it with the tip of your iron. Clip off the threads, or you could thread them through the area. And then, on both ends, you'll have a scarf. A scarf in 20 minutes or less because of the surging and the cutting to the exact size, the width divisible by, by the length, and it drapes so beautifully. Now to do the surging techniques on the cascading scarf. Earlier, you saw the fabric being cut 18 inches wide, two widths sewn together on the short ends, and now I'm ready to do the surging to start the first step of the sewing process. Just a few minutes ago, I was doing an overlock stitch with my Evolution by Baby Lock. Well, now I'm going to change to a rolled edge stitch. So I'm going to use black thread in the upper looper, lower looper, and the needle area. And to do that threading, I can use the extraordinary threading mechanism that is just one of the neatest things about my serger. I have the upper looper and lower looper threads in the threading ports, just about half an inch or so of the threads in that area. And then all I have to do when I have 
the machine in the threading position is to push the button and notice how both threads are going through the threading ports simultaneously it's just one of the greatest things now you can just kind of get all three threads behind your presser foot getting them in order and then move the mechanism the lever back to the surging position so that those threading ports have been closed close the mechanism of the machine and then check some settings the width I have about 3.5 the length about 1.5 you can do some settings testing on your fabric that's important just to do some testings now the rolled edge on our finished scarf instead of black thread I, we use gold thread in the upper looper and lower looper it's a it's fine stitch it's great for this lightweight fabric and the fabric that I have ready to serge when I did the testing I found that I needed just a little extra support on the top this may not be evident with all fabrics but if you're working with a lightweight fabric I highly recommend using a, a strip of water soluble stabilizer and place it underneath the presser foot the fabric and the stabilizer one on top of the other lay one on top of the other and start to surge and you're just going to surge the edges that's all there's to it all four edges the two lengthwise edges the the two short edges and surge away enjoy the process doesn't take much effort you may want to trim off just a little bit of the fabric as you're surging because that will keep that edge super clean let me surge a little bit more before I show you just removing the water soluble stabilizer because it can be removed effortlessly because the needle has perforated the stabilizer you just tear it away and then the stitches have formed over the stabilizer and that seam that edge looks perfect on both sides of the fabric because the scarf will cascade so just continue to surge all four edges and then place a drop of seam sealant at the corner of those thread tails let me find the corner that we finished on this scarf and after the seam sealant has dried then clip off the threads and you're ready to do the next step which I'll show you at the table and that is how to mark the scarf for the elastic placement. Now that you have the edges of your cascading scarf finished with the rolled edge you can create the cascading effect. Now without this next step it's just going to be a normal scarf but here's where everything changes fold the lengthwise edges so that they're meeting and press down the center so that you're press marking all the way down which I've already done you make it a nice crisp line and then do some quarter markings fold the fabric in half the lengthwise edges in half and then fold it into quarters and at each quarter mark I have already placed a pin two at the fold and one at this fold so that I have it approximately divided into force. Now I'm going to open this up because the next step is going to be to apply the elastic. Now the elastic, not your normal everyday elastic, but elastic that can be cut. It's called Fantastic Elastic. It's available in both white and black. It's an inch and a fourth wide and it doesn't change in width when you stretch it. So the, here's the great part about it. When I heard that you could cut elastic change the width I thought you got to be crazy most elastics will ch will definitely ravel well you get in a rib and you just cut this and I had it all pre-measured to about a fourth of an inch doesn't really matter if you get out of your rib it will maybe ravel just a few little areas but then it will not ravel it will keep re maintain its integrity and stretch you're going to cut half the elastic length of your scarf so if your scarf is 90 inches you're going to cut it 45 inches. On my sample I've used the white elastic and I'm going to also quarter mark this, fold it in half, fold it in half again and then place a marking pen or a pin at each quarter mark and I've used just a blue marking pen at each quarter section. Next step. Meet the elastic to the inside of your scarf and pin at each quarter mark. So at the beginning now I'll find the next quarter mark It'll be double the amount, so I'll just look. Here's my pin poking through, so I will just put another pin here, and you do the same at the remaining three areas. You can see that the elastic stretches to meet the fabric. I like to straight stitch the elastic at the end, 
stitching it securely to the scarf, and then do some zigzagging. Here's a close-up of using a very wide zigzag stitch, an open toe foot, and zigzagging the elastic right down the center of the scarf, following the press mark. Just stretch the elastic and stitch. When you get to the other end of the elastic, just secure it with a straight stitch. And here's the cascade effect. Because that elastic was cut half the length of the fabric, it gives it the beautiful drapability. You can create this scarf in 30 minutes. You can create the spiral scarf in 30 minutes, a great way of using your serger. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to create two unique scarves in mere minutes. To learn more about products used in this video, along with my favorite sewing machines, please visit a participating Baby Lock retailer and ask about special offers from this video. Tell them Nancy sent you.